Okay, so in this example, I'm going to show you running logit and probit models in R. And uh, here I'm running this uh, data set that we saw in uh, some of the previous uh, examples where our dependent variable is a binary variable which shows whether a woman is in the labor force or not. That is, it takes only two values, 0 and 1. And then we are running uh, this uh, dependent variable on a bunch of uh, explanatory variables. So this uh, dependent variable is an example of a limited dependent variable which takes only two values. I'm going to go ahead and regress uh, this linear probability model to start with. Okay, whenever you deal with this type of uh, issues or whenever you know that you can apply a complicated model, it is always advisable to start with a simple linear regression model and then move to a more complicated model. That is whenever you report your results, as a baseline, you should always report uh, your baseline ordinary least square estimates. And this is exactly what I'm doing. I'm uh, regressing uh, this model using a linear probability model. And then I'm going to compare the results from a linear probability model with the logit model and the probit model. Okay, the next uh, thing I'm going to do is I'm going to regress uh, a logit model. And uh, for this, I'm going to use uh, this GLM function and I'm going to pass my regression equation as the first argument in this GLM function. And then I'm going to include this family argument in this GLM function by including binomial and I'm going to use link as logit model and this way this uh, GLM function will regress this model as a logit model using the function, the G function that I showed you in the previous uh, video. Similarly, I'm going to use this same GLM command and then I'm going to pass a link as probit model. GLM will regress this model using the G function that I showed you in the previous video as a probit uh, model. So let's go ahead and regress all these models and uh, look at all these results side by side. We can see that all of these uh, three models are telling us a consistent story. The sign of the coefficients are the same across all these uh, three models. They're also showing the same statistical significance in each uh, model. However, as I said in my previous video, we cannot compare the magnitude of the coefficients across these three models, although we can talk about the magnitude in the case of uh, the linear probability model, but we cannot talk about uh, the magnitude in the case of uh, logit and uh, probit models. For that, we need to calculate uh, the average partial effect. Also, we need to calculate pseudo R squared for the logit model and probit model to compare the goodness of fit as compared with this uh, linear probability model, which is giving us R squared of uh, about uh, 0 0.26. So we can calculate the pseudo R squared to know more about the goodness of fit of both of these models. As I said earlier, to interpret the magnitude of uh, the slope coefficients, you need to calculate the average partial effects. And to calculate average partial effects, I'm going to use this library MFX and I'm going to use this logit MFX function and I'm going to pass my regression equation as the first argument. Then the second argument is the data which contain all these variables. And then I'm going to turn off this switch at mean equals uh, false because the default is on. So you have to turn it off to get uh, the correct marginal effects. And similarly, I'm going to use probit MFX function to get the marginal effects for the probit model. Okay, so these are the results for the OLS and uh, these are the results uh, of average partial effects uh, for uh, the logit and uh, probit models. So let's compare this coefficient of women with the kid less than six year old at home. So in the linear probability model, one more child less than six year old is estimated to reduce the probability of uh, a woman being in the labor force by about 0.26. So looking at uh, the marginal effects of a uh, logit model, this effect is about 0.25. So each additional kid less than six years at home reduces the woman's probability of being in the labor force by about uh, 0.257 in the logit case and about 0.26 in uh, the probit case. The logic is whenever you have uh, 
a binary variable, start with an OLS and then regress uh, a logit and probit model and to compare the magnitude of the relationship between uh, the linear probability model and the logit and probit model, you get the marginal effects. The statistical significance will not change between uh, the original logit model and the average partial effects, but to interpret the results, you always uh, get the marginal effects and then talk about the magnitude, talk about the direction of the relationship and talk about the statistical significance using these marginal effects and also uh, instead of uh, reporting the ordinary R squared, you always uh, go with the pseudo R squared with the logit and probit model. You don't have to run both of these models because essentially both of these models most of the times uh, give you identical results. So either regress a logit model or a probit model. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.